Good job. Relax the stick. Let's get our lane in here. This guy here straight out. This one? Yes. Nice and done. You don't want to go. It's not like the helmets I used to carry up over. Okay. We just took off, but we're highly maneuverable. Guys. That's the nice thing about having the most powerful engine ever produced into a production fighter. 21,000 pounds of thrust, that's a lot. I flew F-16 Block 50s, which is a tremendous platform, and that engine's powerful at 29.5. This thing is 10,000 more pounds. So it's already at 520 knots. Why don't we come back with it and buzz the field? Thunderbirds will appreciate that. So we're going to go over the top. Think of it as a ladder, you're climbing a ladder. So no left, right, just pull straight back. Pull harder. Okay. It's a 9G platform, Air Force requirement. Just keep pulling. That's straight up like a rocket ship. Now you can go back and back half. Keep pulling. You would be the first, sir. Keep pulling. You can see the city of Las Vegas. Pull through Las Vegas. Keep pulling. That's where you yeah, take off from. Relax there. Roll left. Nicely done. We're going to continue down towards the ground. Pick up some speed. Bring your nose up some now. Bring your nose up. A little harder. There you go. Relax a little bit. Okay. Thunderbird hangar is right there. So we're supersonic. As you go across low altitude here, you're breaking every single window in those squadrons. Thank you so much. This is pretty cool. Awesome. Home of the Thunderbirds, Fighter Weapons School, and Red Flag Operations. He just got three red crosses. Super Supersonic. <laughs> Which is altitude? So very nice. Is the altitude up there? It's right, 400 feet. Okay. So we'll come over the top again and we'll go ahead and engage a target. So straight up. This time, when you see the ground coming, you're going to relax and roll out on top, okay? And that's called an animal gun. Wow. Well flown, well flown. It's been about a mile every 20 seconds. Well, years ago, their mother got married in this room, so they were allowed. So relax there, roll out. Superb. Would you care to fire a missile or drop a bomb? We have targets available for you. Triangles are surface targets, little squares with a vector on them are air targets. Hmm, I think I'll drop a bomb. Sounds good to me. Take your cursor controller, it's this guy right here. Think of it as a mouse. See that half-filled triangle right there? E. Mm -hmm. Put it on there. It'll latch. You're natural at this. Take the switch here, push forward, push and release. Nice. That makes it a track of interest. It's yellow. Go ahead and push forward one more time. It'll make it a target. Excellent. It's red, red target. Those is dashed, right? Why is it dashed? Because we're not in the correct master mode yet. But in this aircraft, any master mode you can quote populate your shoot needs. You have eight air, 16 service, 10 ground moving target tracks all at the same time. Which is tremendous. I was very happy in my F-16 where I could have two air targets. Okay, take the switch here and go left for me. Notice it went solid. Mm -hmm. Notice you have information for a munitions launch envelope on the left. Had we been doing air to air, that information would be on the right. It makes it really easy for the pilot with a single glance to know what weapons mode you're in. Previous aircraft, not so easy. It can all show up on the right side. Okay, excellent. What I'm going to do is warp you a little forward. Nice advantage of the F-35. <laughs> Unfortunately, only for the demonstrator. Was it 20 Gs? <laughs> <laughs> See this green stop sign symbology? Mm -hmm. It's your launch acceptability region for your weapon. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is turn towards it, and then when it hits inside the inner portion of the green, that's where we're going to release the weapon. How you do that is you push this red button for me, okay? So, nice turn. You'll eventually see the ground target show up as a triangle. There it is. And there he is in our targeting pod as well. Ooh. So we got confirmation of the target. We're looking at our distributed aperture sensor also. And we're doing a nice job at maneuvering in for weapons release. This being a GPS guided weapon, we actually didn't need to go down towards his level. We'd stay up at altitude, just release and go away. But here in the demonstrator, it's kind of neat seeing the entity below. Okay, very soon we'll be at weapons release. What's the W mean in this the circle? This W is your whiskey symbol, your fuselage reference line. That's where the nose of your aircraft is pointing. 
Foresight's yeah. another commonly used term. The little circle area, flight path marker, yeah. the airplane symbol, that's your velocity vector. That's where you're actually going. Something like when an airplane lands, the airliner noses up, but the velocity vector is towards the runway. Same type of deal. The difference is your angle of attack. Okay, go ahead and push that red button for me. Yes. Button falls away. Come on, baby. And doors come closed. It's got some symbology right here. So go over the top for me, and you can see it. Go over the top? Exactly. Just like you did that previous loop, remember? Well, actually, we did a half cube and eight, but this time you're going to come on around and we're going to identify that tank. Basically, making sure that, in fact, it did blow up, right? right. So keep pulling. So is he over, if he's moving beyond Mach 1, he won't hear that? Oh, no, he won't hear that. That's right. Exactly. Keep pulling. Yeah, I'd say he's smoking wreckage. <laughs> okay, keep pulling so we don't join him. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right, well done. How many of y'all are, uh, shoot, we got time, I think. I'm going to put you on final for landing. Sweet. A successful mission like that. Okay, before we were near violently aggressive, G's, etc. Now we're going to be wiggling our fingers, toes, small little boys. That's the key to a nice landing back at Nelson Air Force Base. Throttle back to idle for me. All the way. Exactly. Here's your landing gear. When we actually lower it, you're going to be squeezing that collar, okay? Squeeze it. And squeeze it down. Right. Notice we're 325 knots. Below 300 is when we can put the gear down. We're currently just over 10 miles from the base. You got twin parallel runways heading 210. Your choice of which one you want to land on. The right's a little closer to parking and you're lined up conveniently on it, so that'd be a good choice. What happens if you open up the landing gear before? Will it damage it? Or it damage could. It? it could damage the gear doors. That's usually the limit on the fighter-type aircraft. Thank you. Is it programmed not to open if you're above the speed? Nope, it'll open. Now, as far as conversion goes, that brings up a good point. For short takeoff vertical landing, the Marine Corps variant, it will not, quote, damage itself. So in other words, if you try to convert, it'll ignore you until you're within a safe regime to convert. But the landing gear, they'll cooperate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're below, so you can squeeze and lower your gear anytime you wish. Excellent. If you're in transit, happy gear, three green. Flight path marker on the end of the runway now. Otherwise, we'll get a little shallow. About two and a half degrees. That's fine. Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That's NASCAR. Throttle forward now to capture 160. See the little green arrow? Push it forward. Push throttle forward. And anywhere there is fine. See how it kind of matches up? If you got it against your flight path marker, in other words, bring your throttle back and line it up. Good. We'll just fade right where we were, which is fine for the approach. So small moments, uh, bring your flight path marker up. So where that little airplane symbol is, that's where you're going. Good. Nice thing is you don't have to worry about trim. Automatically trims for you, so you're not fighting heavy stick pressure. So now... Don't have to worry about flaps either. They automatically program with the gear. You said that uh, your fuselage symbol, the whiskey symbol over there? Yes. That's, where, that's what he can actually see. And this, the other one is where this he's going. This is where he's going. This right. is where the nose is pointing. Wow. Well, so we're coming in like this. So he could see that, though. Oh, sure. You, what, what do you mean he can see? Uh, well, you said this is the two-shot symbol where... The, the that's where the pointing. nose is pointing. Yeah, pointing. So this is where he's going. Well, I'm thinking that's so much lower. Would he be able to see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah? Uh, no problem at all. Yeah. We have a design eye, so we have the seat adjusted for a design eye, so you can still see it. If we were too slow and the flight path marker was too low, it actually has a symbol showing flight path marker down here. And that's usually not a good thing because you're high angle of attack, slow speed typically. In this case, everything's copacetic. Okay, you can reduce throttle a little bit for me. Nose is going to want to drop, so you're going to have to pull a little more back stick pressure. See this little E bracket? That's a nice area for landing. You're doing well. Keep it coming down, though. Runway behind you is not useful. 
<laughs> Throttle forward a little. Bring your nose up. Cool. See, that was a nice swap end there. That was well done. Did you see right when we did that where it had that V with the flight path marker dropped at the bottom? That's what we were discussing. Now, the very top of your pedals are brakes. So if you push on the top toe brakes at the same time, you'll slow down straight ahead. Very nice. That's well done. So all that experience has paid off. We have our F-35 pins for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Timmy, grab that and pull yourself up.